friends, this is Trish and welcome to Teacher Therapy. Today we're going to be talking about a much requested topic and that is the topic of why modern school discipline programs like PBIS and BIST and so many others just do not work. I think that we can all agree that the quality of parenting has changed. Therefore, I hate to say the quality of kids, but <laughs> the moral development of kids that are coming into our classrooms are at a totally different place. In some other time, I'm far, far away, it was kind of understood that, you know, you don't cuss the teacher out, you don't throw a desk across the room, you don't wear clothes that resemble a bathing suit, you don't yell and scream and try to intimidate people like, all of these things, it used to be kind of understood by the time you got to school that you just don't behave that way. It was almost unthinkable in certain eras. And even in 2023, if you were to go to other countries, other cultures, maybe even different sub-regions of countries, you will find that some way, somehow, they've retained a lot of those values. But there are other pockets and other regions that kind of look like a zoo. I don't, I don't know how to say what it looks like. It just looks like chaos and complete mayhem. And strangely enough, those out of control schools are the very ones that gravitate toward these kind of new age discipline philosophies. Now, before I get further into the video, I kind of want to talk more about them specifically, like PBIS and BIST, B-I-S-T, is another one that was actually really popular in my region, but I haven't seen it as popular nationally. But I want to talk about them more in case a few of you have no idea Idea what I'm talking about. And I'm going to overgeneralize here. So if you have a school that is using PBIS and it works amazing, please let me know in the comments. But basically, in general, a lot of these programs have completely gotten rid of like any negative consequences. So just for fun, I did a little poll yesterday about whether or not people think corporal punishment should be brought back. And unfortunately, it was one of those timed surveys. I didn't know how to take that option off. So it disappeared after 19 hours. But people actually voted more highly in favor of bringing back corporal punishment, but it wasn't as big of a gap as I thought. I want to say maybe around 55% of people voted yes and the rest voted no. But these days, uh, corporal punishment is not just considered like paddling a kid, although that is legal in 19 states. Um, writing lines can be considered corporal punishment. Um, walking laps and doing exercises can be considered corporal punishment. Just basically anything that would bring about any kind of physical discomfort could be considered corporal punishment. But anyhow, in all of these new systems, all of that stuff is completely gone. They call that punitive and they say it's bad, bad, bad. <laughs> in many instances, office referrals are completely off the table unless the kid is doing something so serious the cops should get called. And even things like taking away recess in a lot of these programs is a complete no-no. Now here's where it gets kind of weird. They say that they're rewards-based in many ways, more so PBIS than BIS, but the way it really works out is it's not always the best behaved kids that are getting the most rewards like you would think. Oftentimes the worst behaved kids <laughs> are the ones that are getting all of the rewards because that's a teacher's only recourse. So they're trying everything that they can do to try to motivate the worst behaved kids by saying, you know, I'll give you 25 scholar dollars. I'll give you a bag of candy. I'll give you, you know, a 15 minute sit in the teacher's desk pass, just whatever we can think of, honestly, to motivate the most challenging students. Cause we know we can't just say, fine, you're sitting out of recess or fine, that's detention for you. That's not there anymore. So it actually effectively ends up happening in a lot of these scenarios is the best behaved kids that are like always quiet and never causing a problem. Many times those kids get passed over and all of the attention still goes to the most misbehaved kids. So in weird ways, it's almost like their negative behavior is reinforced. And in even worse scenarios, believe this or not, many teachers will believe it. Um, the worst behaved kids, if you do dare send them to the office, they will actually come back with snacks. They had iPad time. They got to spend one-on-one -on -one time with the principal building a relationship and oftentimes talking about how horrible the teacher is. And again, weirdly enough, a lot of these systems aren't even being used the way they're supposed to be. They're just kind of getting used in crisis mode and bribe the kid mode. <laughs> 
and even more so the worst behaved students actually get rewarded. So even if you totally 100 million percent disagree with corporal punishment, I want you to imagine how different classrooms would be if we brought it back tomorrow. And even if you took paddling off the table, let's say you mouth off to the teacher and you've got to do 20 push-ups, or you say, I'm not ever doing this assignment again, and <laughs> you have to write lines over it. Or somebody came up with an amazing example in the comments of the survey yesterday, they said, why not bring back community service? Oh, you want to act up in the classroom? You get to scrub toilets with Dawn dish soap, of course. You know, we don't want any bad chemicals, <laughs> but you get to scrub toilets and help beautify your school. Now, I know some of you, like your eyes are rolling so hard, you've nearly been blinded, but a lot of you guys are cheering right now, like, yes, bring it back. Because we know whether you agree with it or not at a deep internal level that it would work. And that's the problem with all of these kind of ivory tower, loosey goosey discipline things. They sound amazing maybe to some academics that haven't even had to substitute teach a real public, you know, K through 12 school, like maybe ever, but at least not in the last 30 years. These philosophies sound so good to them, but they are removed from the actual day-to-day -day realities of what teachers are going through and what a joke these modern systems have become. I think the thing that people have forgotten, and this might be a controversy, personal point to some of you, but a lot of times kids, if undisciplined, untrained, untaught, unparented, they actually turn out to be tiny little monster people. <laughs> the worst of humanity that is inside all of us, if not somehow disciplined away through love and care and support and concern and talking and yes, consequences, if that doesn't happen, then the worst of humanity gets embodied in these little people. They lie, they cheat, they scream, they hit people, they bite, they spit. And depending upon how that is or isn't handled when they're young, those behaviors can either get worse and more apparent or they can get sneakier and more manipulative and learn to hide them better. And in a weird way, what I think a lot of these discipline philosophies do since they focus so much on like, okay, let's sit in a restorative circle and talk about our feelings. Let's process with a counselor and talk about why what I did hurt other people. A lot of these kids get to be masters at manipulating adults. And I've just been floored at how sometimes some of the worst behaved children in the classroom have administrators and counselors completely fooled because they learn quick to adapt and how to play the game and how to <laughs> get out of consequences that aren't really even available to begin with. But let's say there are a few consequences in a school, like maybe ISS or out of school suspension. Kids learn how to manipulate their way out of those and hide their misbehavior even better. Meanwhile, because as a culture and a society, we have changed the definition of right and wrong so much, kids are being empowered in their misbehavior. I actually saw a video from a college, maybe I saw this about like, I think it happened maybe about a month and a half ago, but this lady, this young woman was yelling at her college professor, cursing at her, refusing to follow directions, and she had campus security called on her to remove her and somehow you know of course those kind of videos go viral in all the comments everyone was talking about how the teacher should have been fired the teacher is so ter terrible how dare the teacher <laughs> do this and that completely ignoring that even if that professor was wrong the way the student handled the situation was wrong but we're living in a culture for whatever reason that says if there is any kind of injustice you can riot loot burn hurt people <laughs> just do whatever you you want in the name of like, this thing shouldn't have happened. So now I'm going to do 50 things that shouldn't happen. And my 50 things are canceled out because this one wrong thing really did happen. And that is the mentality that our young people are being brainwashed with. And unfortunately, they are not getting a lot of really great adult examples, even with the uh, so-called Karen phenomena of like all these viral videos of people just chewing out customer service workers, airline workers, any public servant whatsoever, it's always that, oh, this one little thing happened that was wrong. So I completely went ballistic and lost my mind. And now I'm a hero. And I am a really afraid that we are actually reinforcing that in school. Because a lot of times the conversation goes even with the teacher. If a kid loses their mind in class and goes crazy, they come back to the teacher and essentially say, well, what did you do to make that kid so upset? What could you have done to prevent that kid from becoming so upset? What can you do in the future so that the kid won't be so upset? And meanwhile, the kid is sitting there feeling justified
satisfied and awesome and really happy with themselves about how they won another one. And they can even convince themselves that they are like true <laughs> freedom fighters fighting all their teachers. There's also a huge sense of entitlement getting bred, I think, in this generation and schools are feeding into it because in a lot of these you know, professional developments we have about all these random different systems, it's all about, well, give the kid a choice. Don't tell the kid no. Find three yeses before you ever have to resort to a no. Do they not like what you're doing? Well, why not? Why wasn't it more fun and engaging and entertaining? And so again, all of the responsibility is being put on the teachers to create this like mega fun, enriching environment where everybody is doing things that they think are so incredibly interesting and awesome. Yet meanwhile, they're like piling on these super rigorous state standards and loads of super challenging standardized tests and saying, oh, by the way, make sure the kids can do all of these things while having an outrageously fun time at the same time. Oh, and having a really well-controlled, well-managed classroom. Good luck. And so you can see again why teachers are just quitting in droves. Another problem with like these kind of programs like PBIS and BIST is that the entire premise <laughs> that they're built on is that the only reason a kid ever misbehaves is that they don't understand the expectation or they lack the skill to follow through with the expectation. And could that be true sometimes? Of course. But more likely than not, my kids could have written a five paragraph essay on each and every rule and why we have it and what happens when people don't follow it. But at the end of the day, there are no punishments at all for not following the expectations. A huge subset of kids just aren't going to. And then when they're rewarded by bad behavior, you're actually reinforcing the behaviors that you don't want to see. Another huge problem I see, uh, not only in schools with, with a lot of modern parenting, is that kids are starting to really lack having a correlation between their choices and their behavior and actual consequences. And really that's at the heart of the reason for any kind of punishment or discipline or whatever you want to call it. If the idea goes that if when a child is small and they get consequences and they associate bad choices with some kind of pain, that will eventually internalize that understanding and they won't do big things wrong in the future that lands them in big trouble like being in jail, for example. Of course, some people never learn this, but that's another video altogether. Another huge emphasis of a lot of these programs is the fact that students should never feel embarrassed, never feel any sort of shame about any kind of behavior, never be singled out publicly, and never really kind of be scolded or reprimanded. I remember in the program BIST that I had in multiple different schools and districts, um, our, our main catchphrase when we talked to a kid was to constantly remind them over and over again, I'm not mad and you're not in trouble. I'm not mad, you're not in trouble. I'm not mad, <laughs> you're not in trouble. And I mean, like literally, we were told this over and over again, make sure the kids know that you are not mad and they are not in trouble. And so like, what is that really teaching kids? Like a kid cusses me out and throws their lunch tray <laughs> across the room and I'm supposed to say, I'm not mad, you're just awesome. No, that is so not real life. A student is allowed to say or do whatever they want to me essentially. And I'm supposed to say, you're not in trouble. I bet you just really didn't understand the impact that your actions would have on me. Let me sit down, explain it to you, and let's have a conversation about it. And how well do you think that went over? The kind of kids that will cuss and throw and flip out, there's not a whole lot of reasoning that's going to stop that behavior. That's my unpopular opinion. Now, to me, that is not to say that you should not try to do everything before getting to the more serious consequences. I still think we should talk <laughs> to kids that explain things, but I think that there's got to be teeth that go along with that whole system or else again, it becomes a joke. Now I've got to pause because I know that there's just a few mama bears out there, out there that are just kind of imagining the worst scenario they've ever seen or heard of in a classroom and thinking that I'm advocating for that. I'm, abs I'm absolutely not. I really, really do think that what has happened is the pendulum has swung all the way over. I think we've all, you know, seen movies or heard stories of like maybe somebody that went to a really strict Catholic school and you know a kid accidentally knocks their book off the table and then the nun comes and smacks him on the knuckle with a ruler. I 
I'm not talking about going back to that time. But what I am saying is that somehow we've gone from that in certain places all the way to what we have now. And now the teachers <laughs> feel in that little story that I gave, like they're the kid that's just kind of like blocking and hoping that now 50 people don't metaphorically smack them with a ruler. Cause that's how it feels being a teacher in a classroom of sort of hostile little people or big people if you're a middle school or high school teacher. It's like very unsettling because you know that there's just like this delicate ecosystem that could absolutely <laughs> explode at any given mi minute and you really don't know what you can do in that situation. At this point, sadly, I think we're to the point where teachers are actually expected to raise kids and parent them inside of the classroom without any of the tools and time that their actual parents have. I just remember, I think it was with the BIS program, but it could have been PBIS. I don't exactly remember, but we were given this list of all of these skills that basically kids need to have. And it was literally all the skills that you're supposed to be taught <laughs> at a young age by your parents. And we were expected to teach these kids all these skills. And anytime a kid misbehaved, the implication was that we hadn't properly taught that skill enough. Not that the kid just thought misbehaving was fun. Like that could never be the option. It was always back to, oh, well, the, did they understand the expectation? They have the skills to really follow through on the expectation. Was your expectation too hard, too high? Let's talk about bringing those down and being more gracious. <laughs> Yet for all the talk of grace with students, teachers are held to these like awful standards when it comes to data, test scores, and everything we do is tracked essentially. Now is also a good time to insert the grades conversation again, in case you've <laughs> missed it on some of my other videos. There is a massive movement, at least in America, I don't know about other countries, to completely get rid of grades and to basically have just like mastery standards where either somebody is not meeting a standard, meeting a standard or exceeding a standard. So you can't get an F on anything. You can't fail anything. Nothing is graded to go into a grade book with the exception of these kind of mini standardized tests that are called different things. They might be called benchmarks or just these like data team quizzes. And those are the only things that, that are tracked, but yet they don't affect whether a student can fail or or not. In fact, like 99.725, I made that number up, percent of kids just automatically get passed on to the next grade. And that to me is another massive thing that has changed since when I went to school, like kids actually could be held back. And I went to school, but there's been a massive movement against ever holding kids back anymore. So even the natural consequence, or if you want to call it a punishment, I don't know, of having to repeat a grade because you goofed around, didn't learn the content, didn't do any homework, even that's gone now. So just everything within modern education, it almost feels like it's just conspiring to make it 100% impossible for teachers to actually do their job, which is why we're seeing the mass exodus of teachers leaving the profession. So my public service announcement in all of this, this one probably felt a little rantier than usual, um, but just for action research, I read probably like hundreds of different posts from teachers like all over the internet that are more recent about experiences they're having with the PBIS systems and BIST and Restore circles and it made me mad afresh for teachers not only because it's getting worse but it flooded back all the memories from the eight years that I was in the classroom and just all the stress and angst and nonsense and ironically like my constant fear of being in trouble for something crazy <laughs> meanwhile like the kids were never in fearful of getting in trouble over anything so my public service announcement is discipline actually equals love somebody also wrote that in one of the comment sections of the survey yesterday and I, I cheered I was like like, yes, yes. Because the truth is um, what we are setting kids and teens and young adults up for is just a disastrous future. They're not gonna be ready for the real world and they're not gonna be happy. <laughs> the truth is, I don't know if you could think of in your own life, the times where maybe you had a holiday or vacation and you literally did like nothing but eat Doritos <laughs> all day and like, you know, hours of social media and hours of movies. Maybe that feels like a reward for like a day, but a life of that is actually miserable because there's tons of natural consequences that come along with that. And that's honestly what we're setting these kids up for. We're creating this artificial bubble where, you know, kids can like cuss out a teacher or somebody else and we tell them, I'm not mad, you're not in trouble. <laughs> and the extent of their consequence is having a conversation, which usually actually is with somebody that kind of takes their side and, you know, says, yeah, that teacher was so mean, it was wrong. And then their teacher is in trouble at the end of it. So again, that feels like a triple victory for the kid. But 
we are not doing these kids any favors. I think we also need to make a return to reality. <laughs> and that's the fact that people are basically motivated by two things in life, love and fear. And I think the modern push in academia is you've got to get your students to love you. You've got to get your students to love their subject and then they'll behave. And that might be true in some instances, but it's not working out well because it's very difficult to get somebody to love you, especially when you are an authority figure that's trying to get them to do work and get them to do hard things if they don't value that. But also you just can't control that. I can't control as a teacher, like if students like me or not. That, that was, that could be its own video. That was one of the hardest, most frustrating things for me as a teacher because you know, it's just, it's truly impossible. You can do one thing and one set of students will love it. And one a set of parents will think you're the best. And then the other half of the classroom thinks you're the worst person ever and their parents agree. It's just so impossible, but it sets teachers up on this hamster wheel of just burnout all when it doesn't have to be this way. So I think realistically, if you know, maybe a student doesn't love school, they don't love doing their homework, that's kind of normal. I wouldn't say that like a kid's a bad person for that, but if they have no fear of anything happening, like being held back, not graduating, losing privileges at home, losing privileges at school, if there's no love <laughs> for the, the teaching, the subject, nothing, no love for education and no fear of consequences, what we're getting in modern schools is about what you would expect it would look like. Kids are angry, they're resentful, their parents back them up no matter what they do and nothing bad's gonna happen to anyone except for the teacher <laughs> if she dare upsets anybody. So I think it's just honestly, it feels like such a losing job for a lot of teachers today. And a job that they used to love when there was just some basic supports in place, it's now absolutely miserable. At least I'm speaking for myself, that is how I kind of ended up feeling. So my solution wouldn't be to swing from one pendulum all the way to the other side, but to try to have a more balanced approach where there are appropriate consequences that are negative and that deter students, but there are interventions in between there, still relationship building, still kindness, still not advocating like any kind of abuse of any kind of course, but something that actually makes students feel some of the consequences of their negative choices. And the truth is, at the end of the day, we definitely need parental support more than any time ever. I know that there are some crazy teachers out there that go viral on TikTok and social media and they're insane, but I can promise you that is not the vast majority of teachers. Most teachers are kind, good people that genuinely wanted to help young people live a better life through the power of education. And I'll stand by that. But the more nonsense that's created in education, the more those good teachers are actually gonna wanna leave and find something where they can really make a difference because most teachers at this point are just feeling like their hands are tied and they're just actually the ones that are being punished by the education system in completely unfair ways. So that, <laughs> that is my reasoning on why modern educational discipline practices like PBIS just are not working. I would love for you to let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you have any other video topics you'd like for me to cover and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!